episode 15 thought that counts or maybe it's it's the thought that counts my notes just say thought that counts but th- that can't be the full title that's what i have written down too is thought that counts thought too. that counts ah I, okay fine thought that counts it's short it's streamlined it's malibu that's true on youtube we can only have a hundred characters in our titles and most of them are made up of midweek freak treat colon malibu down the family man colon episode number colon we don't have a lot of room for the actual episode title at the end of it so thought that counts as better yeah thank you malibu dan thank you (laughs) (laughs) happy wife happy life next week we'll see y'all then coming up next can't wait hey um (laughs) last week was weird hey that was a weird episode (laughs) that got out of control we've been recording in the mornings me me too Uh, we've been recording in the mornings and we decided to record at night and it turns out we get a real i don't know nasty boy energy at night we become nasty nate at night yeah we shaved the side of our heads and we got nasty naughty in front of y'all and we don't apologize nope we We give it to god exactly let's go let's god jesus take the wheel of the podcast oh you want to talk about p all right jesus if that's what you're into fine i mean jesus is working through us so if anything he was talking about selling his own piss exactly that's what that's what i'm talking about yeah he's like we we just turned jesus take the wheel and he said we're steering it into yellow town and we went Okay, population us, I guess. Let's let's get into it. So, but we're not here to talk about selling jars of yiz with pictures of feet in them this week. That's not what we're here to talk about. Although sales are going great on our OnlyFans, I got to say, we've sold thousands of them already. We're running out of yiz. It's it's getting difficult to keep up with the demand. There's a there's not the enough supply. Is low. Oh yeah, we need to, we need there's a yeah, it's it's tough. It's I like I feel I'm drinking so much water to produce this yiz and now it's at the like the problem is is people oh, we're, I said we weren't going to talk about this. The problem is is that <laughs> the more water you drink, the more your yiz looks like water. So yeah. people want that yellow yiz, so you got to like wait. You have to dehydrate yourself a little bit to get that classic yiz look. And, yeah. and and so you so, got to go for a run. So I'm drinking all this water and then running on my treadmill and then yizzing oh. and it's an endless cycle. Yeah, I'm ripped as f. Oh yeah. But you look great. You look great for oh. the amount of running you're doing. Your torso looks amazing. You're you're jacked all of a sudden. I don't know how that happened because you're just running, but your shoulders are super buff. You're yoked. You got big traps. I'm impressed, honestly. I'm I'm glad that there's a computer screen between us because I'd be throwing myself at you otherwise. I'm an Adonis. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. And you know what? I know this isn't the first time in your life that someone said that about you, but you are carved from marble. You are a uh, you are the statue of David. You got a little dink and big muscles, and I think that that's very impressive. Do you think that was an average size dink for its time? Uh, yeah, I mean, that was like the whole thing, right? Is the Greeks were like, you got a little dink, you got a big brain. That's how it works. So I have the biggest brain of all from the sounds of it. I'm Albert friggin' Einstein. I pray that David was a grower. Oh, he definitely was a grower. Yeah, that <laughs> that's the thing, right? Like, if that was, if that was, da- if David was a real person, that's, we don't know if David was a real person. I don't think he was. I think no. that's, he's that's an a- amalgamation. Exactly. Yeah. But like, if it, if he had the audacity, if Michelangelo had the audacity, was it the guy who carved David, Michelangelo? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. If he had the audacity to carve this man's little ween and then go, also, it's a micro P, what a cruel, th- well, he's, I guess in that case, he's a genius. David yeah. is a friggin' genius at that point. Well, his original title, <coughs> title was David the Shower. <laughs> da- yeah, okay. And that the people went... Can we just call him David? Went, yeah. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Can we just like leave it up to the audience to figure out whether he was a grower or a shower? Exactly. Can we just make it so people can like do a leaning tower of Pisa thing where they hold their hand up and it looks like they're cupping it? <laughs> do you think they had to like uh, love David because of the Sistine Chapel? Like they didn't like the statue, but he oh. was always, already so popular. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's like when someone, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you mean. Someone puts out a great album, and then they're like, "Oh, this, this mm-hmm. is like one of our, the finest musicians of our time." And then their next album comes out, and people go, 
it's good, but it's not yeah. that good. It's fine. But yeah, probably. I think that's probably what it was. The other thing is, is like the statue of David's like nine feet tall. Like he's a friggin' giant. Yeah. I could be giant wrong about little that. Ween. Big body little ween. That's what they say. How tall is David the statue, though? I don't we'll, know. We'll never know. Well, there's no way to find out. There's no way to know. We it's, can't look it up. No. Nobody's ever measured it. They just they, Every time they go to measure it, they just go straight to his ween and go three inches. There you go. That's the thing. Do you think uh, Burt Reynolds ever uh, modeled, like, the statue of David? I would love to see... <laughs> I would love to see the statue of David in that Burt Reynolds pose where he's laying on the bearskin rug. <laughs> I think that's a good look. Yeah, that works. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, the funny thing is about the statue of David is because he's so big, if you were to measure his ween and and go like, he's got like a six-inch ween, but you would leave out the fact that he's nine feet tall, people go, damn, that dude's packing heat in there. But like, eh, not really. When you see it, not really. It's just, it's, it's a confusing thing, right? Per perspective and all that. Yeah, it's all about force perspective. I mean, it's all about foreskin perspective, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> foreskin perspective. Thought that you counts. It. That's what it's about. <laughs> it's the thought that counts. Nope, thought that counts. Okay. Uh, we open in the Marshall's bedroom. Hello. Hey, yeah. Hey. I love a bedroom scene. Me too. We we don't get many of them in the show. We got a bunch at the start of the series, and then they yeah. kind of trickled off, but we're back. I really thought every single episode was going to end in the bedroom. I mean, we thought that every single episode was going to end with God talk, and then they quickly went, nah, we're not going to do that. Yeah, let's yuck and yaw. Exactly. Although we'll, we'll, we'll kind of trickle it back in. I'm referring to this half of the season as Reloaded in my notes yeah. because it's the easiest way to kind of differentiate between the two of them so Reloaded has way more God talk than just OG Malibu Dan and not just at the end it's uh you know Reggie gets into it at the middle of the episode yeah that there's a weird Reggie has a, <clears throat> a weird line in this episode that I'm like I don't <laughs> what are you talking about Reggie but anyway we're not at Reggie yet no we're at uh, Dan and Kate plus eight they're sitting there, and uh, Dan, Kate's online shopping on her tablet, and Dan's, like, Ooh. worried that she's, like, addicted to it, which, from the sounds of it, she is. Like, Kate yeah. is zany as frick in Reloaded, so her character now <laughs> is like, I love shopping! I'm all about shopping, Dan! Where in the or OG season, it was like, I'm a real woman. <laughs> you know real woman? <laughs> You're looking at one. Yeah, this one, uh, Zany's, she's horny as frick. Oh, yeah. She's uh, online shopping like crazy. She's got a personal shopper named Gerard. D Durant. Pordardu. <laughs> exactly. Gerard Depardieu is her personal shopper. What a creep. Is he a creep? That's the creep, right? All French directors are creep? creeps. It sounds like a creep, but that's all French <clears throat> names. So you can't really decipher. I mean, my, my rule of thumb is, are they a French director? Then they're probably a creep in some way. That's just, uh, that's yeah. a good rule of thumb, I think, for most of the time. You ever seen uh, that movie about the, uh, you know, Luke Besson movie you know what I'm talking about? Itchy hey, the, yeah, itchy the Killer? These things. Whatever the thing is, who cares? The most important thing is hey. that there's new camera angles in the bedroom. We see into their ensuite bathroom at one point. Yeah. Dan's and taking a, a lot of their crotches. Yeah, Dan's taking a dump with the door open, and I'm like, "Are you that comfortable with each other? Like, uh, that's still that's still a closed door thing. Like, I don't I don't want my part. I don't want anyone around while I'm taking a dump. That's why I don't do it in public, like in a washroom. No, thank you." I uh, I think one of the notes that the focus group gave was, "I want to be more personable. I want to see <laughs> Dan take a dump." <laughs> I got a quick story. I was at a wedding one time. And I had to take a big poo, and I went into yeah. the. It was at a hotel, so I went into like the public washroom off the like you know where the the big gala room was. I went into the public washroom there, and was just like having it out, like just really blowing it up in there. Real, a real mm -hmm. you know monster mash was coming out of me, and I see like um I see like. I hear the door open and I'm like, well, I there's no stopping it. Like I I'm still I got to go. So, yeah. I look and like I see these shoes walk by and they're like it's like a kid probably, right? Like it's like they look like kid shoes they walk by and I'm taking just a horrible dump. 
And then I walk, I finish, I walk out, wash my hands, and the kid comes out of the bathroom. And then I, and then that kid, like I kept running into him at the wedding the whole night. I, and that kid just kept like looking at me, like I'd, like I'd really kind of like his childhood had ended that day. You know what I mean? Like it was like <laughs> the death of innocence had happened to him that day. And he was like, oh, this is what it sounds like when a man takes a big poop. I'm a little boy. My little poops are like little rabbit pellets this man went in there and did business in that bathroom and it i felt like guilty i felt like really bad knowing that i'd ruined that kid's life <laughs> from the looks of it <laughs> yeah you really shook that kids up well i mean not only did it was it loud but it smelled like you know a dead wildebeest it was horrible it was something was rotten in the state of denmark in me yeah loud brown and proud Exactly, yeah. There's a shirt. Loud, brown, and proud. Of course, we're talking about poopies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could we make a shirt like that? Would that be offensive? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I think we yeah, could. that's off the table. Nah, I'm making it. Loud, brown, and proud. We're talking about poopies. I think we could make that, <laughs> and I think I think it would sell. As long as you put, uh, we're talking about poopies in the tramp stamp uh, location. Exactly. Well, more of like a... You know, like a, I don't know, a, a, a Jenny V, you know, like in the front there, FUPA, FUPA <laughs> position, you know? That is naughty. That is that naughty. Is little, that was a little tricky. Did it, were you excited that they got under the covers mm -hmm. in an appropriate way mm -hmm. in like all the bedroom scenes? Because there's a couple in this. Yeah. I like that they use the bed like people use the bed. That made me very happy. <laughs> and it made me question why they didn't do that earlier. Like it. I, I, here's the thing. Was it this too is much my, acting? No, this is my wild speculation for the first for why they didn't do it before. I think that they didn't do it before because like there's some stupid Christian law that says that you can't share a bed with another like a woman who isn't your wife or something like that and so Dan Marsh David Ayer White was like look we can film these scenes in the bed together but we can't like be in bed together if you know what I'm saying like we can't get under the covers if th that's crossing the line we can't do that that's my theory yeah. and I think it's correct I think that's closer to the truth then they didn't want to act more or they were just being lazy yeah which do, doesn't make sense like you're acting on no. the show how much more effort is it to get under the covers <laughs> not that <laughs> it's much. not much at all no it's practically none maybe they got an air conditioner for the set and then it wasn't so hot to be under the covers or something like that but i think it's more like oh no 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 i can't oh no no i can't cross that line oh that would be cheating on my wife if i laid in bed with another woman even if it was acting tisk tisk they, I, I think you're right we should go back through the series and see if dan and kate ever kiss on the lips i uh i actually i think they do i think it's like quick pecs I, I think they do but it's like towards the end of the first section yeah where they're get, starting to get looser it's starting to get wild yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah uh <clears throat> God, these early morning. I'm gonna cough too. Yeah, good yeah. call. We don't have cough buttons on here. We just have to clear the phlegm out of our throats because we're wild animals. Yeah, I've uh, seen it. The crux of this bedroom scene is that Kate doesn't want to exchange Valentine's Day gifts because she wants to do something special for their anniversary instead. And Dan goes, "This is a trick. I know this is a trick because, like, you know, let's face it, boomer humor. Your wife." Your wife can't be honest with you. Your wife's always lying to you about something. Your wife, you know, who who can understand women, right? Oh, women are just such enigmas. It's not like you could just tell the truth and be honest with your partner. You have to lie to them in some way. They just don't understand themselves. Exactly. The, the women of this world are untruthful. Mm -hmm. They're snakes in the grass. Uh -huh. They're little Slitherachis. Exactly. <laughs> they should all have to wear a patch on their arm that says little Slitherachi. Because <laughs> they are, they lie, and she gets them a gift. Yeah, and it's like, but it's treated as if like, oh, I just, I just found this gift. But it's like, Kate, when we see what the gift is, you, you didn't have to buy this for him. Like this wasn't like, wow, he couldn't live without this. It's yeah, it's a, it's the easiest non-buy in history. Oh, without a doubt, <laughs> it's super easy. But anyway, we got to get to the opening credits. 
Because <clears throat> watching those opening credits, uh, I recognized four clips from it. Five if you include the yeah, one the from the old. Thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I didn't write down which ones they there were, but... Oh, uh, uh, Emily eating macaroni. Yeah, and sneeze. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to remember what the other ones were, but like I didn't write them down, so... You just counted them, and that's the important part. Exactly. And then that's not including the shot of all of them fanning out, because obviously yeah. I recognize that one. But four clips from the last episode were in that opening credits. So pretty good. Oh, I can't wait for more. Yeah, me too. Um, cheerleading outfit, what's that about? Oh, my God. <sighs> my fantasies is what that's about. <laughs> uh, oh, Nicole. It, oh, is it Nicole in that? I thought it was Dan in that. Yeah. Oh, okay. No. Well, then not my fantasies then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we cut to the break room. Very excited to see that there's new lighting in the break room. Like, it's like more natural light, which, I again, glow up. The show is looking better. That's, that's an, it, the break room looks better in this, even though they didn't change a lot about it. Woof. Well, they changed the most important part, which, of course, from last week, you know that they changed the uh, dartboard configuration. Exactly. But yeah, it's it's looking great. Production across the whole board. I mean, the green screen is still a little in your face, oh, but bad. everything's better. Yeah, the green screen's still terrible, but you know, what can you do? What can you do? You can afford three practical sets. Fine. Go for it. You can afford what you can afford. It makes me wonder how many other shows just used green screen for their sets. And probably zero, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, but... I think it's a lot. I think it's way more than you think. There's this video of, like, a shot from, like, a high-budget movie. Okay. And it's in the middle of, like, a city street that just kind of looks normal. There's not too many, like, uh, special effects. But then they just cut, and it's all green screen, and you're like, what? Whoa. Like, green screen technology is insane. It is, yeah. It's not as insane as, like... With the stuff that Disney's doing now with those, like, you know, the Mandalorian sets and stuff like that. That's, like, that's the future of, of uh, rear projection. But, you know, that's... Well, this isn't a political podcast. This isn't a podcast about movie making or, you know, the Hollywood tricks. So, whatever. Yeah. We're just a couple of dumb, dumb Dugans exactly. doing a podcast. Who can spot a green screen from a mile away. Because it makes blonde <laughs> people's hair pink for some reason. I don't know why. Well, not in these reloaded uh, episodes. Yeah, they again looks better, and they got like I think they got new, uh, like a new camera rig that that's on a track that moves. Like there's like yeah. and there's like weird sharp zooms and stuff like that. Like it's like they got this new camera equipment, but they don't really know how to use it yet. So there's like sometimes it just the camera just lurches forward at somebody, and you're like ah, or it just like sharply turns, and you're like all right, okay, do another take. What are you doing? I that's that happens quite a bit in this show is why not take another take <laughs> we're on a budget we gotta go we gotta go film Beckman here's a question for you sure why is uh, naked stu scuba guy getting third place the worst part of the whole story yeah right I feel like looking at his David the whole time would probably be the worst part of Dan's story because Dan is straight as frick he doesn't want to see another dude's donger yeah, I, it doesn't make any sense. It, it's a joke that got some laughs from the real audience, obviously. 100% real, yeah. That is one thing they brought in was a real audience, including the guy who goes, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> They brought that guy in in real life to do it now. Yeah, of course. The joke. They have the money. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it is a strange story. What would be the best part of that story? I don't know. Uh, like it seems like it's a uh, very cumbersome for him to like speak to this guest. Seemed like a interesting guy, much more interesting than uh, people in the first half of this series. For sure. And also, like, why did Dan have to wear scuba gear? He like, didn't. He's wearing a scuba mask and flippers. But like, were you mocking the guy? <laughs> like, why did you? Why did you feel the need to wear all that stuff? Why are you still wearing it? Like, take yeah. it off after the interview's over. It's not like it's attached to your skin. Did you wear it? Was he the last guest? Or did you wear it for the whole show? People people tuning in halfway through would go, why is Dan dressed like that? What's, go what's going on? <laughs> why is he dressed in scuba gear in a suit? 
I don't know, man. He must have been the last guest, and they must have signed off right after finishing talking to the guest. Did you think it was weird that Nicole said that she knew Bad Barbie? Did you think that was weird, that she knew the Cash Me Outside girl? <laughs> oh, that's her name, Bad Barbie? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that a nomenclature people use? For well, her? they call her the Cash Me Outside girl, but the true fans know that she's Bad Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm not a true fan. And You're that not. Kind of breaks my heart a little bit. You're not. We were talking about Dr. Phil off air, but now we're talking about Cash Me Outside on air. It it tracks, though, because is she from Malibu? She's probably from California. I don't know. I don't, uh, I'm not that big of a fan. Oh, uh, you should be. Um, But I loved her. Catch Me Outside. How about that? How about that? How about that? It's great. It became a part of our nomenclature. To use a word you used earlier. <laughs> She's the best. Um, they're all in the break room, and Nicole uh, Nicole says something weird. She says, did you get Kate torqued again? <laughs> and Dan goes, I don't know what that means. And I went, I don't know what that means. Did, I, did you get is that Kate? pregnant? <laughs> Damn, all these girls get out, out here getting torqued. <laughs> you get your wife pregnant again. Like... I immediately thought, oh, is, he, is she talking about getting a copy of the movie Dan Cook it has a cameo in called Torque? He has a cameo in Torque? Yeah. Adam Scott's Torque? Yeah, you bet. Ice Cube's Torque? Yeah. Dan Cook is in it for just a brief second. He gets beat up. He's like a, a jerk who gets punched by somebody. We should review Torque. I want to watch Torque again. We should... Well... Did you... you <clears throat> Huh? You probably did that already, though. Yeah, of course. Oh, talk, watch Torque. Yeah, I have it. It's. I'm looking at it on my DVD. It's right next to Simon Says on my <laughs> DVD shelf. It's next to Simon Says and Harmful of Swallowed on CD, multiple CDs. It's a great movie, everybody. Go out and watch it right now. Well, watch Beckman instead. That's a great movie. Watch, watch him. Torque. Watch him torque walk is the door. Way better. Uh, what else do we got to talk about? Anything else? Oh, like Nicole insults uh, Arlen. She calls him old and pathetic or something like old and bitter, which I thought was great because he is. I'm on Arlen's side now. I'm team Arlen now because he references Kobayashi Maru. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I I like him more in Reloaded. <laughs> like he's less creepy. And, well, I say that, but last week he was like, let's audition little girls. So like, I don't know. I <laughs> Complicated feelings about the guy. Yes, uh, it's gone from I hate him to it's complicated real quick in this episode. <laughs> exactly. Just with the Kobayashi Maru mm -hmm. reference. We know he's a nerd, and we know that he is a super nerd for knowing what that is. Well, the I mean, I'm sure some writer just knew it. I'm sure Tommy Blaze knows it. Yeah, about. of course. Was it, it was Star Trek books that you used to read, right? Or was it Star Wars? Uh, Star Trek. How many, Star Wars. I how, hate the wars. How many treks did you read? Not very many, like you're, three. You're looking <laughs> I had them all. Yeah, you're looking over as if you are still have them. Do you still have them? No, I gave them away to a bunch of pop up uh, libraries. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's a nice move. Yeah, it's a fun date too. We just drove around and put a bunch of books in libraries. It was great. It is fun. When my wife and I used to live in a certain area in the city that's got a lot of them, we would do that every like every week we'd go for a walk around and just see what was available. I love the phrase certain area. Right? Well, I have to be vague so people don't know where we live. Oh, it's very sexual. Yeah. I got a copy of Bear out of one of those. Do you know Ooh, Bear? You know the book no. Bear? Oh, it's a it's a Canadian classic novel about a woman who goes and lives in in a cabin in the woods and then has a sexual relationship with a grizzly bear. And it won awards and it's considered a classic novel. <laughs> And it's Canada. great. It's fricked it, up. There are some funny. For Christmas one year, I gave away. I have. I had two copies of Bear because I bought a nice hardcover of it, of course. But yeah. I my soft cover. I highlighted all the best like sexy bear parts in it. And then for Christmas one year, we did like a, a white elephant gift exchange. And I and the person who ended up getting Bear, I had them read choice sections from it in front of everybody, and it was very funny. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love that it's revered. If it wasn't revered, then it'd just be some weird book. But then, no man, it's a classic. It is a it is a stone cold classic. That if you talk to any literature person in Canada, they'll go, "Oh, bear. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, oh, that's one of our best. That's where that and the Stone Angel. We love it. Those are our two best books, probably. And See, the, the Handmaid's Tale or whatever. 
That would make sense if they didn't get under the covers then. Exactly. Like, oh, it's a bear. Oh, bear. Oh, bear. There's a lot of that kind of talk in it. Oh, bear. Rip my head off. Oh, bear. <laughs> Man, probably got a donger on it. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. He definitely gets an HJ in it, for sure. The, just an HJ? It doesn't... It's not as hardcore as you'd hope it would be. That was my one disappointment, is, like, mm. he doesn't, like... I mean, he gives her a Slitherachi special, if you know what I'm saying. But he doesn't like he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't I don't know what you're saying. He doesn't hit a home run. He gets to like third base with her, but he doesn't hit a home run. So it's like, eh, it's fine. Is it is this Slitherachi special a HJ? No, it's uh, Eat Box. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for whispering it. Of course. That would have been a it'll, little too lewd if it'll you get have back. said it aloud. It'll get past the censors. No one will notice. I'm not... We didn't even talk about selling our own piss this episode. We so did. We talked about it a lot. Everyone. We talked about it a lot at the start of the episode, actually. But I don't think that <laughs> now is. we have four minutes left, and we have so much episode. We haven't even talked about Durant yet. We haven't even got into him yet. <laughs> we... Durant. Durant. We haven't even talked about. We haven't even talked about how this is like a holiday Sinclair mega episode. We get to know so much about Holiday Sinclair in this episode. For one, she's single and probably hasn't gotten laid in a long time from the sounds of it. Two, her ideal man is Burt Reynolds in 2017 when he's like gonna die next year. Three, she... He's dead already? Well, he is dead. He died in 2018. The year after this yeah. was filmed. So, yeah. Oh, I see what you said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like, I, well, that's it. That's all we really learn about her. But like, there's so much Holiday Sinclair. I was loving it. I was gobbling it up. I just, give me more Holiday Sinclair. She hates online dating. She goes on a bunch of dates, all with friggin' nerds who were like, ah, oh, I, I live with my mom, or I love Harry Potter, or here are my pronouns. Legit, that's like a thing. <laughs> they like mock yeah. people who have different pronouns, and they go, cool, righteous. <laughs> Very righteous show, I love it. <laughs> I can't believe that they had the Harry Potter person, because uh, Christians hate witchcraftery. Yeah. And he's a real witch, because he... You know. He casts a friggin' spell. He does. He's standing at the other side of the restaurant. Oh, oh my God! We go back to Frayne's yacht club for this date. Yeah, we're at the yacht club again. I was so I couldn't excited. I can't believe we saw the yacht club again. I was so excited. <laughs> and then a wizard is there, and he casts a spell <laughs> and teleports. Real, real talk. Teleports across the room into the chair in front of Holiday, and she's like, "I'm not interested." And I'd go, "Huh?" At least give this guy a chance. He's a wizard. He's a wizard. He's a wizard, Harry. Why not cast a love spell, though? Well, that's, uh, you know, you can't. I'll tell you one thing. Eric Estrada is not the kind of guy who would be casting love spells on women. He wouldn't be giving right. love potions. I guess a love spell is basically a roofie. It's 100% just a roofie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't. <laughs> You can't just trick right. someone into giving consent. That's that's not how it works anymore. That's how it worked, but that's not how it works anymore. Yeah, I remember that being a plot in a lot of TV shows in the 80s and yeah. 90s. Yeah, just give her a little love potion. Give her this roofie, <laughs> and then she'll do whatever you want. Oh, great idea. Thanks, teenage boy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure the Power Rangers have an episode where there's a love potion. Oh, yeah. Tommy gives Kimmy. No, probably Billy gives Kimmy. Probably Billy gives Trini a love potion. And then. Yeah, Billy's okay. I, I just, if Tommy. any of them is going to give a love potion, it's going to be Billy. The nerd? <laughs> It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be Jason, the like the alpha dog, or Tommy, the even more alpha dog, or Zach, the black guy. It's not gonna be those people. It's gonna be Billy, the computer nerd, or it might be Skull, or uh, the other. What about Zordon? Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> I miss getting laid. <laughs> alpha, Alpha Five, give this girl a love potion. Ay, 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 she can't give consent. <laughs> it's a real deep episode. Oh, yeah. it's They only aired it once, and then there were so many complaints from people to Saban that they went, well, we can't air it ever again, I guess. <laughs> Did you find it weird when Kate and Dan are 
are back in the bedroom and they yeah. exchange, exchange gifts. They're wearing the same uh, PJs. Yeah, I thought that was weird. What kind of couple wears the same PJs? What kind of couple? What kind of and person they, wears silk pajamas? Period. Well, <laughs> maybe it's a sexy like Valentine's ritual. We're at thirty but, minutes already, by the way. Yeah, this is why I was getting back on track, baby. Good call. Good call. This might be a long one. Who knows? <laughs> Well, thirty-five minutes. We can stretch her. That's true. We yeah, we do tend to push push past the thirty. So, uh, what what do you what do you wear to bed? I wear underwear. Me too. I'm just I'm strictly gotch. I'm um, whatever I was wearing that day. I go to sleep in it. Yeah, I uh, I've never been uh, PJs during the winter. Maybe if it's getting real cool, put a comforter on. Put another blanket on. I could never, I could never do naked. I've tried. Me too. Yeah. When I was younger, I was like, yeah, maybe I'll be, maybe I'll sleep naked. And then after doing it a few times, it was like, no, <laughs> no, I don't I, like that. I need some support down there. I can't have my donger flopping around. Yeah. You can't have your David loose in bed. I get it. Yeah. And that is not a euphemism. No. That is just straight facts. Plus, I don't want to rub my raw bum all over the bed. <laughs> Like, I don't want to do that. You're worried about your raw bum? I'm clean, but I don't want to I still don't want to put my bum on like I fart. What if what if little poo particles come out into my bed when I fart? That happens. It's don't act true, like but... don't act like your farts are just gas, everybody. There's always a little bit of poo in there somewhere. It has to pass through the poo pipe. You don't think some of it's coming along for the ride? We could talk about the poo pipe all over the place. We could. And how much we sniff our own poo particles all, all right, the time. All right. <laughs> but instead, we're going to talk about... Uh... This cell phone tastes like grass. Oh, that this this scene bugged me. They're eating dinner, and Emily's like, I don't want to eat this dinner. It tastes like grass. And Dan's like, your mother worked hard on this meal. You need to be nicer about how, what you say. And I went... It's a salad. She did not work hard on this meal. In fact, this is what you do when you don't want to work hard on a meal. You just grab a bag of salad out of the fridge and say, put dressing on it. You put dressing on it. There's not even anything in the salad. It's no. just lettuce. It's just a garden mix. That's it. Okay. It tastes like grass. Your mom, your mom opened the bag and dumped it into the bowl. We need to be nicer about how we speak about this boring meal. Nah. 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 Kate gets Dan this ugly phone case that's got like amethysts and cowboys all over it and she says you know I, I know you're always dropping your phone case but now the cowboys will protect it I'm like Kate <laughs> you don't know your husband at all <laughs> would, no. who would want this phone case well Chuck from accounting obviously but that's neither here nor there and then he has to give it up to Holiday yeah who is like, that's so nice of you. I'm not going on a date with you, Chuck. And Chuck immediately pivots to Nicole and goes, maybe we should go on a date. And she goes, stop shooting your shot at work. Get online. Don't date people you work with, Chuck. That's rule number one. Yeah, that's a real no-no nowadays. And Nicole, she's way too young. That's uh, that's disgusting. Yeah, for sure. We should date Nicole together, you and I. Yeah, I think that would be a thruple I'd be into. Maybe that'll be what our episode's about. Two new young hunks show up in town, and they all start dating Nicole. Two nude hunks. <laughs> running running marathons in scuba gear. Yeah. 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 Uh, hey, at the end of the episode, they're back in bed, and Dan's like, your gifts that you give me are all I need. Your gifts, your devotion and commitment, the life you've given me, our daughter that you've brought into this world... Meanwhile, I'm staring at the clock beside their bed going, it's reading 4 a.m. What are you doing? Are you going to bed at 4 a.m.? That's way too late. What What's happening here? Well, maybe they just got up and Dan's reading the Bible, although they are going to bed. That is exactly yeah. what they're doing. Kate's wearing, like, some, like, lingerie to bed. Hey, hey, like, hey, hey yeah. Dan. Dan, hello. And he's like, good night, dear. It's like, Bro, what? Yeah. How much more of an indication do you need? She's not wearing your matching pajamas. She's wearing this, like, silk nighty. Like, go for it. Become a family man and do your deed. Exactly. Plant your seed and do your deed. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to talk about in this episode? Uh, No. 
I love Arlen now. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love Holiday now. I'm I'm Team Holiday. And we're always Team Nicole. Of course, but we're never Team Reggie. Although I am no. Team Stacy, but I'm never Team Reggie. I'm less Team Reggie than I've ever been. And again, no big farty Marty Dankle in this episode. I no, think he's gone. We're never seeing him again. He's never coming back. No. R.I.P. Oh, uh, Bam Wallet's gone. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Eric Estrada, gone. Victoria Jackson, gone. Uh, um, imagine how much they spent on those guys. Like, it would be off the charts. My, one of my biggest gripes of the movies that we watch is, like, stop paying aging actors an absorbent amount to be in your movies and just focus on like local good talent yeah it doesn't give them prestige it just go oh god this old loser oh eric roberts is in this movie oh terrific great Uh, this is a real piece of junk i guess the dark knight tom arnold like stop paying that man right (laughs) tom arnold's son who has down syndrome don't pay that man (laughs) well now (laughs) i love you i love you we, we love, love you. you. Oh boy! Oh, oh my god! Oh jeepers! It's not working. Dead end. Oh, there it is. Malibu dead. dead. Malibu dead. I love it. <laughs>